When we hear the word bulletproof, we usually think that it's a foolproof way of keeping our soldiers safe from the attacks of enemy troops. But bulletproof doesn't actually ensure a 100% complete level of safety, and many wearers can still find themselves heavily injured and sometimes even fatally. As the scientific world develops better and more durable technology to protect our soldiers, the firearms industry is coming up with faster and harder bullets than ever before. It's a never-ending battle between the two worlds. Before we tell you exactly how safe soldiers are while wearing bulletproof outfits, make sure to like this video Video, subscribe to The Richest and join our notification squad. Also, be sure to click on our community tab for memes, polls, and interesting facts. Now let's get into how bulletproof is military equipment. The body armor industry is a billion plus dollar industry, but the term bulletproof is actually a misnomer. Because while these heavy suits have been designed to withstand high pressure objects like bullets, they're not actually entirely protective and many soldiers can still get injured. The industry is one that's changed a lot over the past 10 years thanks to new technology, and it is fair to say that military uniforms are the most bulletproof that they've ever been. But there's definitely still room for improvement. When companies say their equipment is bulletproof, what they actually mean is bullet resistant. At present, there is no such thing as a a completely bulletproof vest. Vests are only considered to be bullet resistant. This is simply because there is always some type of firearms that can penetrate even the latest advancement in protective technology. As firearms keep developing in strength, companies that produce bulletproof equipment have to figure out new ways to make their products even more durable. The main components of a military outfit are a helmet and a vest. These are the two areas that are most likely to be shot at and as a result are the areas that the industry focuses on improving clothing for. While you might find military grade pants and shoes, it's far more common for armies to clothe their soldiers in standard bottoms with bulletproof vests on. The first bulletproof vests were designed in the late 1800s and were developed by Japan and Korea. These vests were built up from 30 layers of silk, which was found to prevent the black powder bullets that they used back then from penetrating. This soft armor approach was what started the progress to create the much more durable fabrics of today. As you might expect, bulletproof clothes are very heavy. They often weigh in at around 35 pounds, meaning it's not quite as easy to act fast in an emergency. But this 35 pounds is made up of thick, good quality Kevlar material that offsets the force of a bullet. Kevlar is a form of liquid armor. The material is coated in a non-toxic fluid made up of nanoparticles of silica and is completely flexible, allowing for more movement. But the second it's hit by a bullet, the clothing becomes solid, offsetting the pressure of the bullet. But there's certainly a heavy bulk to add to a daily outfit. If you decide to add in bulletproof pants, this heavy weight can go up to around 65 pounds. And though this might seem entirely necessary to protect a soldier in dangerous areas, the huge weight of the equipment means it can actually become counterproductive. When it comes to safety in the military, most soldiers follow the onion model, which describes the different layers of safety when hiding from the enemy. The first layer is to not be detected by opposing troops. The layers then increase in severity, from not being seen, not being hit, not being penetrated, and not being fatally injured. Bulletproof equipment is meant to prevent the final layer from happening, but the weight also makes it so that soldiers are incapable of moving very quickly. So while the equipment might still protect soldiers from being shot at, they can actually cause more harm than good if soldiers are more visible and less able to run. But that's not the only problem with bulletproof equipment. In order to be truly effective, the armor is supposed to sit close to the body. A bulletproof vest is created to sit firm on the wearer's torso, not moving or rising up. But the problem is that the majority of bulletproof vests are designed for men. Women represent roughly 16% of the US Army, but they are usually forced to wear the same standard use equipment. And even the extra small vest was found to be either too big or ill-fitting for 85% of the women wearing it. Because women's bodies are generally shaped differently, these vests are liable to rise up, exposing vital organs or hanging loose around the shoulders. This makes these women more susceptible to danger if they're not properly covered. So, vests might be protective, but they definitely come with their own problems. And they're not the only item in the military wardrobe that isn't technically bulletproof. Soldiers wear helmets to protect their heads from falling shrapnel and general danger. And these helmets are also said to be bulletproof, but they're not. Most USA helmets are made of ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, and they can stop a close range direct hit from most firearms. While older models were made out of Kevlar, new ones can take five times the kinetic energy, making them more protective than ever before. This revolutionary development is made of hydrocarbon molecules that are 100,000 carbon atoms long, all mixed together. These molecules all cross over each other, looking like thousands of pieces of string. Once attached, it's almost impossible to penetrate the surface. For a while, the military tried using bulletproof face masks, but without much success. These masks were hot, heavy, and inefficient at allowing soldiers to move to their best ability. 
durability. Bulletproof masks are often used in hostage situations and other raids, but they're thought to be almost useless when it comes to military protection. While ballistic face masks protect against shrapnel, they can stop a bullet from an AK-47 Kalashnikov, which is the Taliban's firearm of choice in Afghanistan. More recently, in 2017, some soldiers have been trying out Star Wars-style bulletproof helmets. Not only do they protect the individual, but they also use heat-seeking technology to hunt down enemies. Their super strong plates can deflect gunshots and protect against shrapnel, blasts, and fire. The creators of the DevTac Ronin Kevlar level IIIA tactical ballistic helmet claim it's literally bulletproof, which may not give you much hope for any equipment created beforehand. However, a headshot in combat is relatively uncommon, and most shots of this type come from sniper rifles. At this point in time, no amount of bulletproof equipment is able to prevent a lucky shot or a fatal injury from a sniper. And it's still possible to get heavily injured while wearing bulletproof vests and helmets. At one end of the scale, a soldier is still highly likely to suffer bruises if they're shot while wearing bulletproof clothing. But at the other end of the scale, it's also possible to suffer internal bleeding or other issues as well, like a fatal injury. Some people find themselves with cracked ribs if they're shot at while wearing a military-grade vest, and others end up needing medical attention to fix their wounds. All of this depends on the proximity of the shooter and the firearm that is used in the attack. If it's a case of a single shot, most people find themselves adequately protected from any long-term damage, but multiple shots can have a far more tragic ending. At the end of the day, military equipment might appear to be bulletproof on the surface, but it shouldn't be worn with the intention of keeping a soldier completely safe and protected. But for the time being, until science develops at a faster rate than the firearms industry, it's all that our armies have to keep them alive for now. That's all for How Bulletproof is Military Equipment. Are you surprised by what you've learned about the Army's wardrobe today? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.